the whole web industry is changing a lot these days. In fact, that's due to advancements in technology such as HTML5, CSS3, as well as the proliferation of devices like smartphones, tablets, that sort of thing. So me as a designer, I need to think about these new technologies as well as these new screens and then design accordingly. Now I can still use Photoshop, which is great. I can't necessarily like take all this content and just chop it up as images and spit it out because CSS can do so much. Uh, instead of having this be an image, what I can do is I can actually take that title right there and I can, can extract the CSS from it. Now this is the new Photoshop update for Creative Cloud members. I can copy the CSS and I can get what I need out of uh, that that part of the design. So that's exactly what I want. So this helps me part of the way, but I want to go beyond that because I not only need to design for the desktop, but I need to do all that work again for the tablet and again for a mobile device. So it's like three times the work that I have to do. And you can use Photoshop, use that new feature that I just mentioned and execute accordingly. Or you can use uh, this new product we're working on. It's called Adobe Edge Reflow. Now I'm gonna launch Reflow. Now before I do, note that I can, I already want to export my images out. So you're still gonna have some pixel data um, because hey, you know, you need those images. But then you can launch Reflow. Reflow allows you to add text. If you want to, jump in here. Just like I'm doing right now, adding text, starting to stylize that text. Let's make it red. Let's change the font. Pick something kind of fun, like that script that I liked. Uh, I like Alex Brush, which is actually that font I want to use, but you could check a couple of them just like that. And now I can select uh, Alex Brush right there. So you can easily see what I'm doing in here. I'm actually creating CSS is what I'm doing, okay? So I'm jumping in here and I'm creating CSS. In fact, let's add a drop shadow just like that because I kind of like it. And again, I'm actually creating CSS, as you can see there. And that's what Reflow allows me to do, is create the CSS from the ground up, which is great, okay? So I can evolve this design. I can start to, you know, import images, maybe add uh, some sort of box, which is just a div, and start to develop a design. So uh, what I'd ultimately develop is something more like this. This is the design I want based on those images. Now, this might be... Um, something created in Edge Animate, who knows? But again, I can start to nest these divs together, okay? And I can even, again, add a new box, otherwise known as a div, right in here and start to customize that exactly the way you think by adding an image like I'm just about to do now, grabbing this image, dropping it right in there, and you can see how that works. Okay, there it is. Start to stylize this accordingly. But this is the cool part, because this is really only half the story. I'm creating all this CSS, as you can see right down here. I can create that CSS, you know, add my drop shadow. But I need to go beyond just creating this one layout, and I need to create a layout for m maybe um, a, uh, a tablet screen. So I can scale this down and say, okay, look at how that starts to change. Well, I can I can start to think about this design. Say, for instance, this large image, I might want to manipulate it. I always want it to be 100% like that. There we go. So it's actually going to scale like an accordion. So that's perfect. But I would say right about at 650, I want to add a breakpoint. So I can click this plus sign and add a breakpoint about 651, whatever the case may be, adding that in just like that. And I've created this new breakpoint, which is just a media query. So now I can say, hey, you know, for that image that I just added, you, you guys are all getting a little too tight in there. So I'm going to select you. And in fact, let's go over to my layout and I can basically hide him. And then I can start to stretch out these other guys, either visually or numerically like that. Again, just something simple, adjusting each one of these images. Okay, so that's that's looking better. But what did I just do? Well, for this image, which again was CSS, well, let's take a look at it. I not only have that default CSS, but I have the override as well, which is that 28% that I just changed. Notice how it's purple. It's 
it's purple here, and then it's purple here. So it's a clear indication of what I'm doing with that CSS. Scale it down further. In fact, make it pretty small like that. Don't forget your add your breakpoint right there. And uh, then I can start to, again, make the mobile layout. Maybe hide that. Maybe hide this large image. Let's get rid of a lot of these. Maybe we'll just have this one and stretch that one like a cross or something. Uh, you get the idea of what you can do. But what am I doing for this one? I'm changing all the CSS properties. So you have your desktop, tablet, and then your smartphone. You can then take this CSS, copy it, paste it into uh, whatever project you're working on. But that's a way you can create these nice responsive designs that, again, within my one layout, I didn't have to create three different PSD files. It's creating it once, creating the actual CSS, and then creating as many breakpoints or media queries that I want. And then the end result might look something like this. You can see the final one, everything looks good here. As I scale it down, looks good. You can see it pop, goes from four images to three. Okay, everything looks good scale it down even further and it goes down to my mobile layout and I can click through these images. So again, all done using Photoshop for my imagery, reflow for my styling, as well as creating multiple screen content, that CSS, and then integrating that finally with the data. Very powerful what you can do with Adobe Edge Reflow, so watch for that very soon.